Here's my eccentric transformer again, and I'm driving the same bank of 40 uh, super wide LEDs. And uh, right now, <coughs> I have actually switched from using the signal generator to power it to using a 24 volt battery bank uh, with an IRF 510 switching MOSFET. And uh, that's being triggered by my uh, little uh, signal generator up there. Um, through this setup, I'm only measuring power input uh, into the system. I'm not measuring the power that it takes to switch the transistor, so this is being neglected. Um, but uh, with this setup, um, I have been able to get uh, about successfully the greatest um, percentage or efficiency I can get is about 90%. So right now we're under unity, definitely, um, about 90%. But here's something very interesting um, that I'd like to demonstrate. Uh, and that's when we short circuit the load, instead of having it go through an LED bank or something like that, when we're drawing maximum power, short circuiting the load, um, the impedance point on the input actually increases significantly with a higher impedance and will drop from 48 milliamps input to about uh, 17 to 20 milliamps input. So in uh, maximum load condition, our impedance rises rather greatly and uh, we reach kind of a more stable situation. So I'd like to demonstrate that here in one moment. Here's our eccentric transformer again. Um, this time the pickup coil is uh, hooked to a switching bridge rectifier, a high speed switching bridge rectifier, and that is hooked directly into the milliamp meter seen on the left. And that represents a uh, short circuit or maximum load possible being drawn from the, from the pickup coil there. Um, as you can see on the meter on the right, the uh, input amperage we have about 15.4 milliamps, which is considerably lower, about half as uh, high as the um, maximum impedance point that we could find when the pickup coil is not plugged in. So right now we're actually hitting a higher impedance point with a load than we can possibly hit without a load with the secondary pickup coil in place. Now here's something rather interesting. Um, on the bridge rectifier right here, uh, connected to the negative side, I have a little alligator clip, which I will connect to ground in a second. Uh, notice that we're at about 7 milliamps on the uh, output, or about 15 milliamps on the input, and now I'm going to connect the ground wire. We've gone up about 2.5 milliamps on the input, and we've doubled our output. So this is very interesting. We're staying in a very, very high impedance mode. Uh, as you can see, our little uh, visual indicator, our impedance matching bulb there is not lit in the least. No matter how close you get to it, you won't see any light in the filament. And yet we're drawing a decent amount of power from this short-circuited secondary coil. A few other quick things to note here. Um, I believe that the ideal driver for this would be a Class E amplifier, and a Class E amplifier has a matched um, output network that allows the switching to take place at the correct time in the AC cycle to keep switching losses at a minimum, and they can run 90 plus percent efficient. So uh, this is kind of what I modeled this driver after, and uh, right now I don't have the uh, feedback going to feed the switching circuit. I'm running it off of uh, the signal generator right here, but the the second or the primary coil here, the big red one, uh, basically acts like our matched uh, or tuned uh, load. Um, and what happens is we receive a very high impedance point uh, when we drive this thing. So um, as you can see here from the input, this bulb, which is directly connected to the input, it's a little tiny flashlight bulb, the ones that you use with uh, little C cell batteries or whatnot. Um, the filament is completely dim. There's not nearly enough current going through there to light it. And also this uh, switching MOSFET right here, the IRF 510, uh, feels cold to the touch. I wouldn't even say it feels warm or room temperature because maybe that's just because I'm touching a metal casing. But it doesn't heat up in the slightest bit. Uh, once we start getting into the, uh, I'd say, 30 to 50 milliamp range draw on the input, it'll start to slightly warm. But right now, uh, I believe if we upped the uh, voltage on here on this battery bank, we could probably drive this thing pretty decently with very little transistor heating and loss. So all in all, I believe with uh, correct uh, driving mechanism, 
um, with the transmitter acting as a tuned load network and with the correct form of energy being drawn off mainly in the uh, uh, what I'm essentially referring to here is the short circuited uh, version of this we can achieve a very high efficiency device that uh, um, draws very little from the source and reaches its highest impedance point upon um, putting the greatest output.